The study we will talk about is called Lucifer's Masterpiece Deception. We will study the 17th chapter of Revelation. Lucifer desires to imitate God. He is unable to resurrect anyone. The life of all beings is in the power of God. However, he desperately wants to astonish and delight all his followers with the great miracles he can do, especially by imitating the resurrection. He wants to deceive people by offering everyone the longevity, immortality and the possibility to be like gods, that is, like fallen angels, through the false resurrection of the Antichrist, but hiding from them the fact that such a way will lead them to eternal death. He wants to delight and amaze people with his miracles for them to believe and follow him. He wants to present himself as a God and one who desires them good, but in fact leading them to ruin. Therefore, when it comes to the resurrection or awaking from the dead, he uses deception in order to perform it out through the Antichrist and present it as a real event. The topic we are studying is about Lucifer's imitation of the Antichrist resurrection, that is the resurrection of the last Pope, which will amaze and delight the whole world and throw it at the feet of the Antichrist, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? The last Pope, according to the Bible, is the one who was dead but appeared again. We are curious what happened to him. Satan cannot resurrect anyone. God and Satan do not cooperate. They are on opposite sides. The Antichrist, or the last Pope, is the one who was dead and appeared again. God is not going to resurrect him so that he would persecute God's people, for God would then collaborate with evil. Therefore, we cannot speak of actual death of Pope, but just of the imitation. Lucifer can take the form of a dead person and appear perfectly imitating the appearance and the tone of person's voice. However, Satan will not be in the form of a Pope or Antichrist, because it is written in Bible about the Antichrist that he is a man of sin, a man of iniquity and a son of perdition but not a fallen angel. And there are thoughts going on around that Satan will take the form of an Antichrist, um, which Bible denies. The Antichrist will be a man, precisely a Pope, who will be murdered at the second coming of Christ. And, um, and Satan will be taking the form of Christ and will come to reveal the Antichrist um, as his own representative. For the last Pope, it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. We see here he is a human being. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Thus the Antichrist cannot be Lucifer because he will be alive during the millennium and be bonded in the bottomless pit. The verse explains further. And the beast was taken, namely the last pope, and with him the false prophet, namely the leader of the apostate Protestantism, that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. After the second coming of Christ, all the fallen angels will be imprisoned alive in the abyss for a thousand years. The scriptures do not say that God will kill the fallen angel, Satan, who would imitate the Antichrist, so that possibility also falls away. The only possibility left for us is that the Pope was skillfully removed from the scene and that his funeral was superbly directed. His supernatural appearance is in preparation now for a critical moment of the whole world. 
It is said for Roman Church in Revelation 18.2 that she is habitation of devils and a hold of every false spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The verse is showing us that here is the throne of Lucifer and that he plans and controls all events. It is mentioned twice that it is a hold of unclean spirits, which means that the religious leaders, the people, are under the control of unclean spirits or fallen angels. And now we turn to the study of this most shocking topic in Revelation. Pope John Paul II is alive and will appear soon. He is removed from the scene and now they are waiting for a suitable time for his return. The beast, the Pope, that thou sowest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast, namely the Pope, that was, and is not, and yet is. And another translation says, The beast, the Pope, you have seen was, is not, but is to rise from the abyss. Yet to perdition he shall go, and the dwellers on the earth will wander, all whose names have not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life. When they see the beast, the Pope, was, is not, but is coming. Then verse 11 of the same chapter says, And the beast, a Pope, that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. In the Holy Scriptures it says, The coming, the coming, parousia in Greek, of the lawless one. Parousia is the word which is used to describe a personal, magnificent, glittering and most glorious second coming of Christ. The only other time when this word is used again is indeed in this verse to describe personal, magnificent, glittering, glorious and supernatural coming of the lawless one, which is, as the rest of the verse says, according to the working of Satan. And in the continuation of the verse it says that the coming of parousia is with all power, signs and lying wonders. It is not going to be a place where they will choose as usual, as they always do, um, a last pope that will end the world history, but a magnificent and glittering coming or parousia which is followed and enabled by the power of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders. Lucifer well prepared the ground for this deception. John Paul II is remembered as favorite Pope and in glory to him his statues are erected on every corner. The goal of the masterpiece deception is that at a critical moment for the whole world, when it's fighting after the global collapse for its survival, to establish the order out of chaos, or the new world order with John Paul II on the forefront through the Roman Church with the aid of Lucifer's miracles. On the following picture we have a famous Masonic motto which means order out of chaos. This eagle with a motto is found on the Masonic seal, 33rd degree, as well as on many Masonic emblems, as we can see on the screen. Pope John Paul II calls for the New World Order back in 2004. Pope Benedict calls for a New World Order in 2009. Pope Francis calls for a New World Order. What does the New World Order represent? Bible gives respond, and the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as king one hour or fifteen days, prophetically, 
with the beast, the Pope. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, the Pope. Here we have a silver coin which was published by the Club of Rome. And on one side of it says New World Order. There is also a 13 levels pyramid and on top an all-seen Lucifer's eye. While on the other side of the coin it says 10 world regions. For all the world is divided into 10 regions where region number one is Israel, then it goes Europe 2, the USA 3, and so on. We also see on the coin the same thing which was revealed by God to the Apostle John 20 centuries ago, that the world will be divided in 10 regions or kingdoms whose head will be the last Pope. The New World Order is a world divided into 10 regions under the control of John Paul II. Time magazine wrote about the new Roman Empire. The last kingdom was the fourth kingdom, namely the Roman kingdom. However, the Bible reveals that the Rome will rule the world at the end of the world. And Time magazine is indeed confirming this, announcing the coming of the new Roman Empire, while on the right side of the screen we have a holy alliance between the US and Vatican. It is the chapter 13 of Revelation that tells us about these two powers, one political and another religious, that will pull the whole world into destruction after themselves. And in the end, the Bible is once again confirming this all to us. And the woman, Roman church, which thou sowest, is that great city, Rome, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. There are many empires on the earth, however, the Rome is the empire that reigns over kings of the earth. In the book The Keys of This Blood, which contains many revelations of Mary, the Jesuit writer Malachi Martin says, It is John Paul II's highest aim to see that his church controls not just America, but the one world government that is coming. Once that goal is achieved, John Paul II's key objective will be to impose moral order on the world with whatever sanctions. And Bible says we won't be able to buy nor sell. Unnecessary to achieve it. This book contains many statements of the Virgin Mary through which Lucifer himself spoke. In the book it says, John Paul II is and will be the sole possessor of the keys of this blood on that day. However, John Paul II has died. In one of the foreign newspapers, John Paul II during the pontificate stated, God is Catholic. And it is also said that only the Roman Church will bring the salvation to a man. However, John Paul II died, so the prophecy of the Virgin Mary will not fulfill. And is it so? Lucifer knows not the future. However, he zealously studied the Bible and imparts the prophecies from the Bible in his way, interpreting them as it suits him. He then passes them on to the people in the form of Mary, the apostles, Jesus Christ, or other faithful people in order to deceive them and govern them according to his will. Such persons believe far more in these apparitions than in the Bible, which should be the measure by which we examine every vision, apparition, dream or teaching. The Bible and the Bible alone, sola scriptura, has been the characteristic of God's true people throughout the ages. The Keys of This Blood is a world bestseller book and it was sold over 10 million copies in the first edition. Is it possible that Satan missed so much, claiming that John Paul II was the last Pope who will be the only keeper of the keys of the Kingdom of God that day, but he died? He would thus shake the fate of millions of his followers who believe in Mary's apparitions and her messages.
Did Lucifer turn out to be naive with this prophecy, or maybe he is much wiser than many think? Let us remember that he copies from the Bible, and the Bible says, The devils also believe and tremble. Why? Because Lucifer knows that all it was said in Bible was said by him who knows all and who is an absolute truth. Therefore he knows that the prophecies are solid and he believes in them, but he persuades men not to believe in the Bible. Let's see what the Bible or the Holy Scriptures have to say about who the last Pope on earth is. God's omniscience is amazing. God through John in Revelation, 20 centuries in advance, describes the history of the Roman Church, listing individually the most important popes, them seven, to recognize the last pope, or the eighth, who completes the history of this world. And we can say together with Psalmist, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it altogether. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain unto it. And we can truly, as the psalmist, be delighted with God's omniscience and wisdom, for he revealed to John what will happen in many centuries ahead, in the tiniest details. Let us start now with this prophecy. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, judgment of the Roman church, the woman in white represents the true God church, while the harlot woman represents an apostate church from God. In Bible, the beast represents the king or the kingdom. Today it is a president or a state. As a proof, we have text written in Daniel 7. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. The woman, harlot, represents Roman church in this chapter, while the beast represents papacy as a system, but also pope as a ruler or a king. And we read again. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, judgment of the Roman church. And what kind of judgment will it be? And the ten horns, kings, which thou sawest upon the beast pope, these shall hate the whore, Roman church, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And that church, or a woman, she sits upon many waters. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. The Roman Church constitutes a huge organization which is under the leadership of the Papal See and serves its interests. Millions of its members in all countries of the world are taught that they are obliged to show submissive obedience to the Pope, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Roman Church enters into illicit relations with the rulers of this world, and it creates a world politics which God condemns and calls fornication. Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, Roman Church, sits in front upon a scarlet-colored beast, papacy. We see the red robes here. 
full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The Bible gives us the response, what does the blasphemy mean? Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Popes claim for themselves to have divine powers and they can forgive sins, which according to Bible is blasphemy against God. Innocent the third said, The pontiff of Rome takes the place of the Saviour when he forgives sin. The forgiveness of a single sin requires the omnipotence of God. It is really not too much to say that the popes, considering the elevation of their position, are as gods. Saint Bernardine of Siena wrote, Thus the Pope can, in a sense, be called the creator of his creator. The power of the Pope is the power of the divine personality, for the conversion of bread into the body of Christ requires as much power as the creation of the world. Christopher Marcella says about Pope, Thou art our shepherd, thou art our physician, thou art our governor, thou art our husbandman. Thou art finally another God on earth. And the woman, Roman Church, was arrayed in purple, and her bishops wear purple robes, and scarlet red color, cardinals wear red robes, and decked with gold, and we see skeletons of the saints decked with gold, and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, or Vatican, the Great. So it is Babylon under the mask of Christianity, and she is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. While Joseph Ratzinger was still a cardinal, he gave a statement for a daily telegraph in 2000. It must be always clear that the one holy, catholic and apostolic universal church is not the sister, but the mother of all the churches. The other churches are sisters among themselves and the daughters of this church, and this church is a mother to all churches. And with this he indeed confirmed this biblical prophecy, that she is a mother to all churches that have separated from God and the obedience to his law, and a mother to all secret societies and organizations with Jesuits established to serve her interests. We must consider those churches that adhere to her teachings and who follow her example as her daughters. The Pope conducts an ecumenical dialogue with all the churches. Pope and Jews, Pope and Orthodox, Pope and Muslims, Pope and Buddhists, Pope and Hinduists, Pope and Dalai Lama. An ecumenical alliance is made with everyone. And I saw the woman... Roman Church, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. It cannot be rightly said for any authority that is drunk of the blood of the saints, like for the Roman Church that cruelly persecuted the followers of Christ. There is evidence that during the Dark Ages, about 68 million Christians were killed by the Roman Church. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman, Roman church, and of the beast, papacy, that carries her. And the papacy has the seven heads and ten horns. And the papacy that you saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. When he says that the beast was, he refers to the time when papacy persecuted, 
When he says that a beast is not, it means that papacy is not persecuting and is not a beast. It still exists, but it hasn't got a persecuting power. And when he says that it will come out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, it means it will become a beast again and it will persecute. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast, papacy, that was persecuting, and is not, it doesn't persecute, and yet is, and it will come again to persecute the people of God. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. The seven heads represent Rome, the city upon seven hills. Right on the picture, we can see all seven hills in Rome. Luther went to visit Rome. From afar off, he saw a city upon seven mountains. Deeply touched, he fell on the earth, raised his hands and said, Hail to thee, holy Rome. He once wrote, It is almost incredible what infamous actions are committed at Rome? One would require to see it and hear it in order to believe it. It is an ordinary saying that if there is a hell, Rome is built upon it. It is an obese from where all sins proceed. And Bible in the book of Revelation says that the beast ascends from obese, bottomless pit. The text continues, and they are seven kings, five are fallen. To understand this prophecy, it is very important to understand next. On the chart we have phases of Roman church in the past, present and future time. John was taken in vision to the time when papacy doesn't have power and it doesn't persecute. And that period was presented to him as the present time which is from 1798 until the Sunday Law in the USA. The past time, which lasts for 1260 years, when papacy was a beast and in persecuted, was from 538 AD until 1798 AD. And in the future time, it will last for 1260 days, is when papacy will become beast and persecute again. So we have three periods, present, past and future. This is very important to us in order to explain these verses. On the next picture, we have a list of all popes where we can search and check this biblical prophecy about these eight popes. The text says, And they are seven kings, five are fallen. We see the word fallen is in the past tense. So in the past medieval age, when the beast was, we need to find five popes. And we are going to look for them by their names. And we will notice that others were either more than five or less than five. We are going now to look for these five popes and their mutual name they had. Paul I reigned from 757 AD. And I would like to stress something here. We have the picture of the Pope and his crest. And let us notice that on his crest there is a tiara, which is a papal crown, which consists of three crowns, which means that the Pope is a king of heaven, earth and king of underground. It is very important to notice that we have a crown tiara on every crest. And then we have Paul II, who became a Pope in 1464. Have a look at Christ. Again, there is Tiara. Paul III reigned from 1534 and again having a Tiara on the crest. Paul IV from 1555 again having a Tiara on the crest. And Paul V... 1605, again, having tiara on the crest. And the prophecy says, five are fallen in the period between 538 until 1798, when the papacy was a beast. 
Exactly five popes with the name Paul reigned, while the other names of popes were more or less than five. Therefore, we refuse them. We only take those names that were only five. The prophecy says there were five poles, and it has been documented here on the screen. When the beast was, five poles were fallen, and here we have their years when they became popes, and all five fell exactly in the span of medieval age from 538 until 1798. These five popes are very important as well as the next two in order to recognize the last and the eighth pope. Then the prophecy continues. And one is, this is the present time, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. We have Paul VI, who became a pope in 1963 and reigned until 1978. We see that he too has tiara and crowns upon it. Then after him comes John Paul I, who reigned only but a 33 days from the 26th August until the 28th September 1978. He too had a tiara with crowns. And in the period when the beast is not, or is not persecuting, we have one who is, and that is the Paul VI, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And truly we have one more Pope, which is John Paul I, who reigned only but 33 days, and he continued for a short space. Indeed, as the prophecy announced. And after him comes John Paul II, straight after John Paul I in 1978. He is the eighth pope and is of the seven because he has the name in the common with the rest of seven. Same as the beast was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, applies to papacy, it also applies onto the last Pope that was, he reigned, and is not, and will come out of the bottomless pit, we will see later, he comes out of the grave, and go into perdition, which is the eighth and is of the seven. Verse 11 says, And the beast eighth Pope that was, and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. We can see the details on the next chart. Five poles are in the medieval age, the sixth here when the beast is not, the seventh comes after the sixth and continues for a short space, and the eighth follows who was a king and needs to come up again to become a beast, namely the persecutor of the people of God. On the next picture we have all seven kings which help us to recognize the eighth and the Last Pope on the earth, five in the medieval age, the six is here, then one straight after him for a short time, and then we have the eighth Pope who is first the king and later the persecutor of the people of God. And the beast eighth Pope that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition. What does obeys mean in Bible? It indicates many things, but we will focus on the text in Romans 10.7. Or who will descend into the obeys? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Obeys or bottomless pit is grave, for Christ was in grave. The Bible is telling us in Revelation that the beast is coming out of the obeys or the bottomless pit. In the other words, the Pope needs to come out of the grave. For the last Pope, if rise that he was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. He was a Pope, then he died, then will come out of the grave again to rule and at the end will go into perdition during the second coming of Christ. Thus says the Holy Word of God. And the beast, eighth Pope, that was and is not, he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. Some translations even say that after his second reign, 
he will go into perdition. Pope John Paul II, or Karol Wojtyla, was born on May 18, 1920, in Poland. On May 18, 2020, last year, he turned 100. Given his age, will he be able to live another decade and welcome the glorious second coming of Christ? The answer is in the mark of the beast. The Pope has been removed from the scene and is kept safe for the Lucifer's masterpiece deception for all times, when he will appear supernaturally and become an example of what God supposedly wants to do for the good of all people. Jesus Christ was the representative and image of his Father and was sent into the world as the second Adam to make a new immortal humanity in his own image, the image of God who shall change our wild body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And this is the true solution for the immortality. The people become partakers in the divine nature of Christ. In parallel to this, the Antichrist will be the representative of Satan himself, and will have his form and genetics. Through him, Satan will offer people the keys of immortality, and thus deceive and ruin the world. As shown in the cover of Time magazine, the future of medicine is in achieving longevity and immortality, which is achieved in uniting human DNA, genetics of humans, with the DNA of snake, genetics of Satan, or fallen angels. The last Pope and Antichrist, John Paul II, who is the eighth and is of seven and goes into perdition, was in very poor health condition back in 2005, when he was removed from the scene. His supernatural appearance will be Satan's masterpiece. He will strengthen John's DNA with his own and extend his life and health maybe for many decades or even centuries, and present him as an example of what a human being can become when he does an upgrade with alien beings, that is, fallen angels. All the deceived inhabitants of the world, condemned to suffer a second death, will be amazed by this supernatural action, believing that this deception is a miracle from God. They themselves will want to achieve immortality and longevity in the same way, but instead they will end in eternal death. Malachi is a bishop from Ireland who came to Rome in 1139, and during his stay there he received a vision of all future popes to the end of the world, which he recorded in the form of cryptic phases. Malachi's prophecy is a list of 112 Latin phases that represent every pope, starting from Pope Celestine II, 1143, to the last pope, Peter the Roman, whose pontificate will end with the destruction of the city of Rome and the dreadful judgment. And this is what the scriptures are telling us indeed it will happen. In the fifth plague, Rome will be destroyed and then God will execute a dreadful judgment upon it. One of Malachi's most enigmatic prophetic phases is the Laboris Solis, and it refers to the Pope John Paul II, Carol of Attila. This term is commonly translated as from the labor of the sun or sun worker. The term the Laboris Solis can also mean solar eclipse. Some associated with the day of his birth, May 18, 1920, when the solar eclipse occurred indeed. It is claimed that in Malachi's time that expression meant solar eclipse. The solar eclipse can also symbolize the Pope who ruled, then was eclipsed for some time, only to reappear and rule again. Same as we have a sun which gives light and it gets eclipsed just to reappear and shine again. The same is applied to the Pope. He reigned, then he was hidden or eclipsed for some time, and he would reappear and rule again. 
Here we speak of Satan who rewrites the prophecies and passing them on to his followers. Lucifer also made a plagiarism of the biblical prophecy regarding the last three poles and communicated it to his followers. One of the visionaries from Garabandal claimed that the Virgin told her, After Pope John XXIII died, Our Lady told me, After Pope John, there will be three more popes, one will reign only a short time, and then it will be the end of times. Here he says the end of times, but not the end of the world. We will labor it later. When Pope Paul VI became Pope, Our Lady mentioned this to me again. Namely, Lucifer came again and passed on this biblical prophecy. She said, Now there will be two more popes, John Paul I and John Paul II. And then it will be the end of times, but not the end of the world. Why the end of times? Because it is the time when the last Pope reigns, and during his lifetime the end of the world will happen. Second coming of Christ will happen, and Jesus will personally eradicate last Pope with his coming. This is why he says here, the end of times, but not the end of the world. Now we are going to say something about the connection between the secret societies and Pope. Pope Francis is the first Pope in the history of the United States to address both houses of Congress. Why was this event so important to people in secret societies? The Capitol or White House is made in the shape of a temple like the Vatican. The Pope is considered to be a divine person in fallen Christianity as well as in secret societies. The scripture says, So that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. People in secret societies believe that the Pope is the embodiment of Osiris. Then, in fact, Osiris himself will appear in the form of the Pope in that same temple in the White House. Osiris is gradually taking Protestant America into his own hands. This is the reason why that event was so important. The Pope represents Osiris or Nimrod for people in secret societies. Some Masons expect Osiris to rise from the dead and rule the world. And we can read it from their books. Osiris will rise in splendor from the dead and rule the world through those sages and philosophers in whom wisdom has become incarnate. And these are Masons and Illuminati. Therefore, Osiris will rise in splendor after the working of Satan from the dead and will rule the world. So he is dead and needs to come from the dead to rule the world. We see here the same biblical prophecy. Then the next text says, Yes, some Masons truly expect Osiris to rise from the dead and rule the world. On the next photo, we have crest of the last three popes. It is really interesting to notice that on the crest of Pope John II is a papal free-crowned tiara, while on the other two crests of the other two popes there is a common priest, hat or mitre, which tells us that John Paul II is alive and he is the one who wears tiara, while Benedict and Francis are transitional popes. So the return of John Paul II is waited who is to come and end the history of this world. This biblical prophecy is even visible to us through the crest of popes. There are currently three popes on earth. Two are visible, while the third and the last pope has been removed and kept safe for the final and greatest deception in the history of this world. Zion's monarch, or Jewish king, is a powerful king and patriarch. King of Popes, something like Roman rulers and Byzantine emperors or pharaohs of ancient Egypt, in whose hands will be secular and spiritual power and who will rule the whole world. So Jewish king needs to rule the entire world and he needs to be the king of Popes. It is written for Christ, he shall be great 
and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Since the Jews rejected Christ as the Messiah, they used the Old Testament texts that speak of David's throne, which is to be established forever, for their future king and ruler of the whole world. The king of the Jews will be the last pope and at the same time the patriarch of the international church and the ruler of the Masonic kingdom. We see that idea of all religions, wherever it be Jewish or Masonic or Christian, is to unite in one person and that person is the last pope. Jacob Visser, a Jewish historian and researcher of Orthodox Jewish history and philosophy, said that the mother, grandmother and great-grandmother of John Paul II were probably Jews who came from a small town not far from Krakow. He said, according to Orthodox Judaism, a person's Jewish identity is passed through mother's bloodline. Here is a photo of a young Karol Wojtyla or John Paul II with his parents. I saw a photo of the Pope's mother and showed it to people who didn't know who she was. Everyone said she looked like a Jew. That's when I started researching its origins more. Although he believes that the Pope's father was an ethnic Pole, he believes that the mother of John Paul II, Emilia Kazorowski, is a Jew and that she is the daughter of Felix Kazorowski, a businessman from Bialystok in Poland. Here we can see her grave. Kaz is a common surname among Eastern European Jewish families. Emilia's mother, the Pope's grandmother, was Maria Anna Miriam Hanna Scholz. Scholz is also a common surname among Jews as is Rebecca, or Ryback, which is the surname of the Pope's great-grandmother, Susanna, Jewish Shoshana. The Pope's mother is a Jewish convert to Catholicism who married a Pole. Her children grew up as Catholics and the Pope was baptized. That would shed light on why the Pope had to hide from the Nazis in November 1940. If he were an ethnic Pole, this would not be necessary. It would also explain why this Pope felt a strong desire to improve relations between the Roman Church and the Jewish people. The ex-Iranian president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad held a speech in United Nations back in 2006 about the 12th and the last Imam who will end the history of the world. When asked by the journalist of the American TV station ABC about his apocalyptic statement, Ahmadinejad said, The Imam will come with logic, culture, science. He will come so that there will be no more war. He will invite everyone to enter into brotherly love. Of course, he will return with Jesus Christ. The two of them will come back together and by working together they will fill this world with love. Bible teaches that Jesus Christ will come in the glory of his Father and all holy angels. However, here he says that Jesus will return with the twelfth Imam or with some other person. Let's see what else is said for the twelfth Imam. Followers of Ishmael believe that Ishmael, the son of Imam Sadiq, did not die but was declared dead for higher purposes, that he is alive to this day and that he is the promised Cain who will appear to rule the world. The twelfth Imam who will come back and rule the world did not die but was declared dead for higher purposes, that he is alive to this day. This is quite interesting. Let's read further. Imam al-Bakir said, Kaim will have two secrets. During one of them, people will say he died. But in fact, it will be just a game as we read before. He will be just declared dead while still alive. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad 
address the UN General Assembly saying that Christ's second coming will soon follow with the last the twelfth Imam. According to Shia belief, he must rise from the dead and rule the world after a third of the world's population dies from an epidemic and a third dies in a war conflict. According to the beliefs of the Shia Muslims, who are supported by the Iranian president, Jesus of Nazareth will return to earth together with the 12th Imam and they will begin the era of Islamic justice and eternal peace. In 2 Thessalonians says, For that day, Jesus coming, shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of the sin be revealed, the son of perdition, whom all religions will follow. And then shall that wicked be revealed, <coughs> whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. We see that Lucifer is bringing him who was alive and dead, and apparently lived again. So his coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And the beast, eighth pope, that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. In some translation it even says after his second reign will go into perdition. Biblical arguments for the last eight pope as follows. He had a weapon wound, assassination, and survived. Had the wound and survived, as the text from the book of Revelation testifies. Let us remember Mahmoud Ali Aja's assassination of John Paul II in 1981. However, but few people know about events that happened following 1982. During the visit of John Paul II to Fatima in 1982, the Spanish priest Juan Maria Fernandez Cron approached the Pope with a bayonet, wounded him and shed his blood. Bayonet is a type of weapon which is very similar to a dagger, but to a sword too. It is something between a dagger and a sword, as described in the Bible, and it says that the Pope will have a wound by a sword and will live. Juan Maria Fernandez came close to the Pope, wounded him with a bayonet and spilled his blood. According to Cardinal Stanislav, the Pope's personal secretary, the priest managed to wound Pope John Paul II with a dagger and shed his blood, but he was overpowered by the Pope's security guards and was subsequently convicted and imprisoned in Portugal. Biblical arguments for the last eight pope. He had a weapon wound, an assassination, and survived. We have seen that this has indeed happened with John Paul II. The USA will exalt his encyclical Day of the Lord, which is described in the 13th chapter of Revelation. He is the only out of all popes who wrote the encyclical Day of the Lord to be Sunday and soon the whole world will follow his encyclical where he exalts Sunday. Then he says, Five of them were fallen in dark ages, and truly five poles were fallen in the middle dark ages. Then, the six and the seven are in the period when papacy has no power, and truly, them both are there. Then, the seven pope reigned shortly, only 33 days, continued a short space time. And that is John Paul I. For a short space he remained a pope, as the prophecy said. And then the eighth comes out of a base grave. He comes after the seventh pole, and he was a pope, and then he needs to come out of a base, namely the grave. Further, he says for the eighth or the last pope that he is not, and he comes out of a base and goes into perdition. It means he has two reigns, and at last it says, the eighth brings decree of killing God's people, and he himself will be killed by the glorious second coming of Jesus Christ. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour, fifteen days, with the beast, the pope. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, 
the Pope. Ten kingdoms or ten economically political regions have been proposed by the Club of Rome and accepted by United Nations. The official name for these ten regions in the Club of Rome and United Nations is the Ten Kingdoms, indeed the same name as in the Book of Revelation. At the request of the Bilderberg Club, on 13th of September 1973, the Club of Rome pronounced an accurate map of the Ten Kingdoms. In 2010, at the request of Bilderberg Club, the Club of Rome named all ten kings of the world regions, but for security reasons, the list of named sovereigns has not yet been published. These have one mind, the ten kings, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, the last pope. They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the kings of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou saw, where the whore sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns, kings, which thou sawest upon the beast, the Pope, they shall hate the whore, Roman church, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. That same prophecy was shared by Lucifer back in 1871 with Albert Pike, who passed it further to Giuseppe Mazzini. On August 15, 1871, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Giuseppe Mazzini, then the leader of Illuminati, that the Third World War must be led through Illuminati agents in such a way as to create a conflict between Israel and the leader of the Islamic world. The war must be carried out so that Israel and Islam equally destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual and economic exhaustion. This is the chaos which they are building now through these agents. They will cause severe social cataclysm. The ultimate goal of this devil's game is the destruction of world religions, Islam, Judaism and Christianity, as well as atheism in order to allow a planetary manifestation of the doctrine of Lucifer. And what is the doctrine of Lucifer? That he is good and that his angels are good too, and that he should be worshipped while the father and son are, and his angels are the bad ones which need to be eliminated together with those who worship him. Next few pictures are telling us that we are heading such direction indeed. Satanists with devil horns worship Lucifer. And here we have a Pope and his Cardinal who are also greeting him with devil's horns. Christ vicars apparently, who show the satanic sign of the devil horns, which means we love you Satan. On the bottom left picture we have an upside down cross in the satanic church, and then we have the same inverted cross on the Pope's chair. The inverted cross in Christianity as well in Satanism. Pope Francis shows sign 666 while mentioning God's name, wanting to show which God he serves. He says here, which leads us directly to God, while showing triple six, which represent Lucifer. John Paul II in Phoenix, Arizona, at a stadium named Some Devils, very interesting name, shows the sign 666, as does Pope Francis in the previous picture. Then it is not to wonder why will they together with ten kings destroy Vatican and establish a planetary religion which will worship Lucifer directly. However, these days will be already in the last seven plagues, days of the sixth plague, and it is a matter of days before the second coming of Christ. And verse 17 says, For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, the Pope, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman Roman church which thou sowest is that great city Rome, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Here we are going to end this study. Greetings to all listeners. May the Lord be with us all until the next meeting.